I can't play soccer games, but that's okay because the team responsible for eFootball can't make them. Shockingly basic and hilariously broken, not talking about me, eFootball may be the most accessible soccer game ever made, because no matter how bad you are, no matter your level of experience, coordination or sporting know-how, there is no way on God's green green earth that you'll ever be as fucking embarrassing as eFootball 20 fucking 22. While football games are far from my wheelhouse, outrageous laughing stocks are entirely my kind of ball game, and as far as humiliatingly awful products go, eFootball is in a league of its own. Do you see what I did there? Yeah, I said league. Do you get it? Do you get it? Because leagues are how we measure distance in the ocean and eFootball should be yeeted into the fucking sea? Sports jokes. I love them. And eFootball is the biggest sports joke going right now, a valiant effort by Konami to publish an even worse game than Contra Rogue Core. It's slow, it lacks features, its UI is fucking ugly, it's a threadbare and not even quarter bait product that clearly isn't fit for launch, it's an attempted live service that stumbled at the first hurdle because it lacks a goddamn pulse. It is, in fact, a game so bad it tempts one to pine for the promise that Konami will give up making games entirely and focus on vile little pachinko and slot machines, that bastardise a range of beloved video game series from Castlevania to Metal Gear Solid, all of which in recent years would have been better off if Konami hadn't sprayed liquid shit in video game form, and slap the franchise logos on them. From Metal Gear Survive to the really fucking awful Castlevania game that just hit Apple Arcade, it's trash. Konami seemingly only ever returns to actual video game publishing when it has something truly goddamn atrocious to offer the world. For years, Konami's- I want to go back to- I started watching Leprechaun 2 this morning, I, I really should finish it. Um, I'm- my ADHD is still stopping me from following anything, but I feel, I feel if I put, like, films about leprechauns on, it will try and, you know, get my attention. For years, Konami has shown a distinct lack of interest in being a video game company. It's a ridiculous series. Doing the... Leprechaun, I mean. Doing the bare minimum to remain considered a video game publisher, the company dribbles the occasional terrible product while focusing largely on real-world gambling mechanics. I didn't even write dribbles as a joke. That's a football thing, isn't it? To its credit, Konami's embrace of gambling is inherently more honest than the exploitative likes of Electronic Arts or Activision, since it at least goes straight to the casinos themselves, rather than try to hide casino-like behaviour behind games rated suitable for kids. Well, that is until e-fucking football came along and then came in our mouths. Speaking of cum in the mouth, it appears that every character model in eFootball is prepared for a heaping dollop of the stuff, mouths perpetually hanging open to the mute sound of stony silence. I prefer to think of them as awaiting a cavalcade of cocks to spray wantum jism into their gaping maws, because the alternative is that they're screaming. 
silently screaming to an army of cardboard cutouts masquerading as a crowd, forced to compete in a universe where referees paradoxically fly on the ground and limbs twist to eldritch proportions. Given how thoroughly glitchy and broken the world of eFootball is, it's not a stretch to believe that the athletes trapped within are perpetually shrieking into an uncaring void. The game's fucking shit is what I'm saying. I'm not the only one saying it. In fact, pretty much everyone is saying eFootball is fucking shit. And that's because eFootball is fucking shit. This dismal free-to-play follow-up to Konami's formerly beloved Pro Evolution Soccer series is currently the absolute worst reviewed game on Steam. An utter achievement when you consider the level of shit that gets onto that service. And we're not even talking about the asset flips. Currently, eFootball sits at overwhelmingly negative on the review scale with a staggering 15 1,700 plus reviews and counting. I'd call it jaw-dropping, but that would be offensive to eFootball's gaping character models. I also must offer respect to the Steam users who successfully applied the tag psychological horror to the game store page. Funny and true. No pros, no cons, just two words. Absolute garbage, writes one reviewer. As a 15-year Pez fan and player, it seems like it's done for me. This game is surprisingly shocking to the core of my bone and my body, claims another. I press run and he run, but can't stop. I try to shoot and pass and he did, but not good. And body balance for every player is not fair. How can my face is pulled by a centre back with strength of a gorilla and down with a pain but no foul? And I don't know you say goodbye, please let me you didn't go forever my love. Seriously, why I can't enjoy the game? I don't why but the feel is not right. Yes is true. I tell you, now you tell me, what's wrong with this world I don't? but I smile in front of my family. And then there's my favorite review on the page. My grandma could do better. She's dead. This is all before we get to the fucking pre-orders for loot boxes. Fucking fuck. I don't swear too much in these videos. See, despite being a free-to-play game, eFootball comes with a purchasable $39.99 premium player pack, which contains loot boxes that you won't be able to open until almost a month after purchase because this game is so bloody unfinished, they didn't even implement the manipulative microtransactions yet. Or, more cynically, we can suggest they done that to create a sense of false investment and to try and get players knee-deep in the product before they start tantalizing them with in-app purchases. It's something we seen games do in the past. Either way they fucked it up because this game is so very, very bad. It's just so perfectly Konami that it took a break from the one series it was still receiving consistent critical acclaim for and then completely fucked it up for no good reason. And as the rarely credited originator of the fuck Konami movement, I must say it feels like coming home again to say those sweet, sweet words as we're reminded once again that Konami is an absolute pissing joke of a publisher slash fabled front for organized crime. Fuck Konami indeed, my friends. Fuck Konami indeed. The company did what companies do best when albumin rivulets caress their cheeks and that's issue a solemn JPEG TM. In it, Konami apologises for its bullshit while clearly only being sorry that nobody accepted their soft wet dump of a game. We are very sorry for the problems, simpered Konami, and want to assure everyone we will take all concerns seriously and strive to improve the current situation. This work will be continuously updated, quality will be improved and content will be added consistently. From next week onward we will prepare for an update in October while receiving further opinions through questionnaires to our users. And therein, folks, lies the problem with eFootball, and it's not just eFootball's problem. See, before the game even launched, soccer fans were encouraged to temper their expectations thanks to a significant road map of updates. And we've all seen this story before. We saw it with Anthem, we saw it with Marvel's Avengers, we saw it with half a dozen fucking live service games that launched in a blatantly unfinished state and then failed to meet any of the promises on their precious friggin' roadmaps because they were too busy fixing 
rather than updating their rushed, vapid, insultingly underdeveloped sewage buckets. eFootball finds itself now in the exact same position. Konami has released an unfinished game, confident it could just improve it later, but it's now forced to hold off on improvements to do the basic fixes that should have been done before launch. Stuck in a position where it's now having to play catch up, it's been hit with the irony that faces any product rushed to launch and subsequently failed as a result. If you release a game too early, you find yourself perpetually running late. There is no doubt eFootball's road map, like the road maps of so many games before it, will now face delays and hurdles that the game's promised features will be held back because obvious bug fixes, visual improvements, and basic fucking gameplay need to be focused on. And what truly frustrates is the outright refusal of the so-called AAA game industry to learn a single fucking lesson, to so much as glance at its own history, to attempt maybe just once to try something smarter instead of repeating the same glaring mistakes time and time again in the thoroughly mindless pursuit of cash. Roadmaps in the games industry have zero fucking credibility because they're never stuck to. They're never stuck to because the industry doesn't see them as ways of providing a live, perpetually updated experience. Instead, they see roadmaps as an excuse, a get-out-of-development free card, a way to sell a product now, get the money now, suck a players in now, and then promise it'll be finished later. Maybe be if enough people buy it. That's all roadmaps are. They're fucking excuses. They're justifications for selling you an unfinished product. In fact, for all its awfulness, eFootball might be a little bit better than the live services that came before for the simple fact that it's at least free in a basic sense. You at least weren't expected to pay upwards of 60 bucks for a glorified pre-beta test. No, you could just pre-order loot boxes. What the f- Craig, did you know about this? No, don't watch Leprechaun 3 without me, you bastard! Live services are a fucking joke, mate, and the punchline is always the same. eFootball might be another fine example of Konami being Konami and fucking stuff up, but it's more than that. This is a problem we've seen across multiple publishers, and it's clear they're gonna keep trying to get away with it. They'll keep selling unfinished games, because hey, why bother developing a feature-complete product when you can have money for nothing? And that's all these live services are. Money for fucking nothing. Mark Knopfler would be proud. Hey chums, if you're in or near the Pittsburgh area, just a quick note to say I am back in the town for a live appearance, or rather two live appearances this coming weekend. On October 9th, no, on October 8th, I'll be at the Pittsburgh Grand Hall for Enjoy Wrestling's Night Moves, and then October 9th, the very next day, it's a Saturday, I will be at the Howe Building with Rise Wrestling, my home promotion. So, would love to see you come by, if you can come by. Otherwise, I guess I won't see you there. But, it's gonna be good.